All right, class, so this is part two of the uh, Excel assignment number two, which is on sales forecasting. And I'm going to back up just a little bit and make sure we uh, understand, you know, where we're at. Of course, these hypothetical growth rates come from the uh, come from the assignment in iLearn. So you have to copy and paste this table from iLearn into your spreadsheet to get these, these hypothetical growth rates. But your growth rates will probably vary as you're uh, running the simulation. But if you have it like this, then you can go ahead and update these growth rates for your actual growth rates as you run the simulation, and it should uh, populate correctly. Now, but everybody should be starting, but you do need to double check your round zero fast track report to make sure that you're starting with, uh, I'm looking at the, now the, the market share. I can see the low tech is at that number, high tech is at that number for actual, and potential is this, you know, the same amount. That's the total number of units. Uh, demanded, and you can see that everybody starts out the same with 16.67% market share, or basically one sixth market share. And so that's my low tech market, that's my high tech market. There's it's round zero, so it just ends up like this, and that's my uh, percentage there, percentage there that I did to the to the hundredth. So you can see how it gets that number there, that number there. And I'm going to go ahead and add another column called total. Oops, I can spell correctly. Let me move my uh, wires out of the way. I'm going to center this, and then uh, I'm going to actually add these two numbers here, so I can see the total market. And then I've got it like that. Let's see here. I may just um, go ahead and do this in a kind of a bold boulder. These on down, I'll do in a little bit of a lighter boundary, and then I'll do a big bold boundary around the whole. Um, table for round zero. And so now I can double check and say, okay, this says that I would have sold in total um, 1,200 units of the product table. And I go back to my round zero fast track report. And I can scroll up to my production summary uh, right up here. And I can see, yep, that's correct. I sold 1,200 units of ABLE. And uh, going back to my spreadsheet, I can see that I sold 840 in low tech and 360 in the high tech. Now what I'm going to do is, since I got this table set up correctly, I'm going to actually grab this whole table and just uh, copy, let's see here, copy that, and I'm going to go one row down, and then I'm going to hit paste, and this is where I start editing now for this next table, because I want this to be round one. Now I know with round one, I start out with, oh, let me just make sure my referencing is correct, which it is not, so I need to make sure that I start out with that. And then I come over here to that, so that's where I start out. But I know that in round one it grows. And how much does it grow by? I can look at the fast track report right here for, oops, wrong way. For low tech, in, and uh, let's see, it's going to grow by 9.6%, but I need to check this, and it does say 9.6%. So I'm going to use my hypothetical growth rate here, and that's going to be my growth rate, 9.6%. Hit that, and then my formula is not set up correctly here. But what I want to do is show how I can grow it by 9.6%. Now, I know that 9.6% of the 5,000 is 484. So I know it needs to grow by 484, but I want that to be my new market size. So the formula I'm going to type in here is this number times 1 plus this number, times 1 plus this number. And then that basically gives me the original 5,040 plus the growth amount. And so that's my new low tech market size and I'm going to come over here and copy this over here. Oh, I got to make sure I get my high tech referenced correctly, 20%. And uh, so now I see what the total number of units is based on these industry conditions report. Total number of units is going to be that number right here. Now I come down here and this is where I also need to double check some things. Um, yeah, that looks correct. I'm, I'm basing it off of here, but I need to make sure that I, um, so there's a couple things I'm going to do. I'm actually going to anchor it um, because, um, well, actually, yeah, I can anchor it and copy it down. And now I know that it's it's going to do that times that, that times that. But I also know that I'm going to be copying this down for year after year after year, and this anchoring would actually continue to anchor to that cell. And so maybe I don't want to anchor that, so I'm going to actually anchor, do it this way. And then now that I've got it in here, I go in here and I can just toggle through F4 and it takes the anchoring off. 
And now I'm going to come in here and toggle through a 4, and it takes the anchor read off. So now my anchor is off, and uh, that is the right number. Now if ACE ends up being you know 10% here and 5% here, actually, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to copy this down, copy that down so the formatting is correct. And then I'm going to change this to a tenth of a percent. So I really don't need the hundreds of a percent when I'm doing my forecasting. I'll change this to be just like that. Same with all these, just like that. Okay, I'm just going to copy this down. Um, and then I'm actually going to hit F2 and I can actually drag this up there like that. Hit F2, and I'm going to drag this up here like that. And now everything's referenced correctly, but I know that I'm going to have 0 here, 0 here, because it's not out yet, maybe. Maybe 5% here, 10% here. And just these are just hypothetical numbers. You can type them in um, for right now, but when you take the quiz, it'll ask you to type in certain numbers, and you'll use these amounts to take the quiz. So that's my round one. And then I'm going to copy this down again. Get copy. Just go run more down, hit control V. Um, let's see here. There's that. Oh, now this one didn't turn out correctly because it's got to be this formula right up here, right? This 10 point. Oops, let me come back over here. Um, hit F2. It says it's C16. So I want it to be that one right there. What is going on here? Something's going on with my scroll wheel. Like this, and I want it to actually be. There we go. That number right there, 10.4, and then I copy this over here, and it should be correct. Now this number should be pulling. I'm hitting F2. Yep, it's pulling from there. That's my growth rate, and that's the new number, and that should be pulling from there. That's correct. That's my growth rate, E7. Just go up here. Yep, that's it, and then that's my new number. So I can see the new um, total market size. Um, number of units should be coming from that number times that, that's right. And number of units here should be that times that. I can go in and change these estimations as, you know, as I'm working on things. And maybe this is growing at 12%, this goes down to zero. And that gives me a more accurate forecast. And I need to change this to round two. So you see how that works? And then I'll do one more round for you just to see how quickly it can be done. You know, there are some edits. You just have to be, remember what needs to be edited so that you get carried over round by round. Um, unfortunately, this number will have to be edited every time because it's only dropping down by one row each time up here. And it's dropping by, you know, eight or nine rows down here. So the relative referencing doesn't work exactly perfect. I just double check my numbers by hitting F2 to make sure the formulas are what they are supposed to be. So anyways, that's a little um, sales forecasting template that you can create to help you see how large the market size is for each of the rounds. And then based on your estimated market share, you plug these numbers in as estimations, it'll give you a, a sales forecast. And then as you're doing that, of course, you know, each round I usually look at this potential market share in units and use this kind of as a baseline. And then I decide um, what's going on to the next round. Am I making ABLE more attractive to low tech, less attractive high tech, or is there more competition entering the high tech? Whatever the assumptions may be, you can use those assumptions to uh, change your estimated market share. And then you use the math to actually come up with a more accurate sales forecast, which should be able to drive uh, your pro forma numbers because the more accurate this sales forecast is that you input into the uh, marketing tab in your CapSim simulation, the more accurate your pro forma statements will be. Good luck! Be sure to save this file and take the quiz first before you turn it in.